So I would like to thank the organizing committee for inviting me to present at this very interesting workshop. As introduced earlier in this session, the satellite observation revealed a substantial decline in September Arctic sea ice extent. And shown in the um, right panel is the um, lowest record in September Arctic sea ice extent in 2012. And this decline trend is, has been often attributed in large part to the increase in greenhouse gases. Interesting, during the same period when we have a decline in Arctic sea ice extent, we also have an increase in trend in the Antarctic sea ice extent. And it's not well understood what caused the opposite trend in the two hemispheres. And historical record also shows there's a much decayed variability in the Arctic surface air temperature. So the recent rapid warming um, we see in the satellite period is mainly due to the decline Arctic sea ice. However, in early of the 20th century, in around the 1930s, there's another rapid warming period. And after 1940, there's a um, cooling period lasting for several decades. So it's important to understand the uh, mechanism for this much decadal variation in addition to the long-term trend. The Atlantic Meridiana overturning circulation is known is a major source for the multi-decadal variation. Um, so the key question I would like to address is what is the role of low frequency AMOC variability in the observed Arctic sea ice decline since 1979? In this uh, early study back in 2011 using GFD or CM221 1000 year control simulation, for the first time we identified that the AMOC is indeed a key player for the winter Arctic sea ice variability. And showing here the uh, AMO index is uh, highly correlated with the uh, Arctic surface air temperature and anti-correlated with the Arctic sea ice extent. And this regression map shows uh, in the model the, um, with uh, intensified overturning circulation, it's lead to a positive phase in, of the AMO and uh, induce a reduction of winter sea ice concentration over Labrador Sea, Greenland Sea, and Barents Sea. And the spatial pattern is very similar to the observed decline trend in winter sea ice concentration over the satellite period. That indicates a possible role for the overturning circulation in the observed winter sea ice decline. And this anti-correlation between AMO and winter Arctic sea ice extent is also found in the three models and also the paleo record. Um, so for this anti-correlation to be hold, we need to have a, a strengthening of the overturning circulation over the, similar, over the same period as uh, of the satellite period, we have a decline in winter CS. But before 2004, before the establishment of the rapid program of direct observation of AMOC, uh, we, we do not know how the AMOC changed in the past. So, we can um, reconstruct the historical variation of the overturning circulation using some fingerprint. So um, in this early study, uh, one fingerprint identified is um, in the tropical North Atlantic, the um, surface temperature over tropical North Atlantic is anti-correlated with subsurface temperature in the same region. And using GFDL CM2.1 water housing experiment, it shows a weakening of the AMOC leads to a southward shift of the IPCC and cooling in the um, surface tropical North Atlantic. Meanwhile, um, the um, thermal climate is deepened and also the weakened western boundary current induces a warming at subsurface. So this anti-correlated change is shown to be a fingerprint of the overturning circulation. <coughs> suggests that the uh, AMOC was indeed weakened during the 70s and strengthened since then. And this tropical AMOC fingerprint uh, also found in semi five models and paleo records. Another um, fingerprint is from extratropical North Atlantic, so um, which defined as the leading mode of upper ocean heat content. And so this very recent study uh, explains the simple mechanism uh, why a change of the overturning circulation can lead to this uh, um, dipole pattern in the fingerprint. If initially we have a positive uh, uh, AMOC anomaly at northern high latitude, that will propagate southward uh, with the slow advection speed. 
and the Miridano heat transport will propagate in the same feature. Um, that lead to a convergence of uh, Miridano heat transport over the subpolar region and divergence of the heat transport over the Gulf Stream region. And the time integration of this heat convergence divergence lead to this dipole pattern in the Zodon integrated upper ocean heat content and which corresponds to this uh, dipole spatial pattern. And this fingerprint uh, can be well predicted on the decadal time scale. Um, in this paper, we also show another experiment if we uh, surprising the AMOC propagation without the propagation of the overturning circulation, this fingerprint disappeared and there's no predictable signal. And this um, southward propagation um, also exist in the isopycnal models and also in uh, the high resolution models. So this schematic plot um, explains that um, in the region north of 34 north, um, due to the existence of interior pathway of North Atlantic water, the, um, this uh, slow propagation of the overturning circulation and the meridional heat transport um, is uh, crucial for the involution and the enhanced decadal predictability of the AMOC fingerprint, which consistent with the recent decadal prediction studies, um, successfully predict the warm shift in the North Atlantic subpolar air in the mid 90s by initializing a stronger AMOC at northern high latitude, as uh, Rowan Sutton showed yesterday. And south of the um, uh, 34 north, because there's no interior pathway, the AMOC propagate with the um, fast coastal wave speed. So um, the direct influence of ocean heat convergence diverging in this region is much weaker. That's why we have um, most predictable signal in the subpolar air. And if you look at the um, uh, surface temperature, the sea surface temperature, the AMO signal also has a, a tropical branch um, that has to be through the uh, atmosphere response to the change in the subpolar region, such as the cloud feedback. If we do not simulate well those atmosphere response, we cannot predict well the tropical signal in the surface temperature. So showing here is the time series of the observed AMOC fingerprint. Indeed, there's um, strengthening trend since the late 70s, and after 2007, there's a decline trend, which is consistent with the rapid program observation. And this um, fingerprint is also has coherent change with observed AMO index. Um, that's indicate the um, overturning circulation is indeed a key player for the observed AMO. And the mechanism for this fingerprint you cannot find in the model coupled just with the slab ocean. So the, now the question is uh, whether this strengthening trend of the overturning circulation can also cause the decline in summer Arctic sea ice extent. So in this recent paper published early this year in PNAS, um, I studied the mechanism for the low frequency variability of summer Arctic sea ice extent using a much longer control simulation, 3,600 year uh, CM2.1 control simulation. It shows that the Atlantic heat transport is uh, indeed uh, one of the key player for the summer Arctic sea ice extent variability. So the Atlantic inflow enters into the Arctic region mainly through the Iceland's Cotton Ridge and further split into two branches. One enters the Barents Sea through the Barents Sea opening, the other flow northward as uh, Western Spitsberg Current and through the East Front Street. Both eventually uh, reach the Central Arctic. So I analyzed the Atlantic heat transport across the Arctic Circle, this uh, integrated heat transport along this bright curve, um, and find that there's uh, indeed strong um, anti-correlation with the uh, September Arctic sea ice extend over the, this entire control simulation at a low frequency. Um, so with this long control simulation, you can focus on the multi-decadal and centennial time scale. Um, so showing here the right line is the inverted Atlantic heat transport, which leads the September Arctic sea ice by several years. 
And the spatial pattern shows with the enhanced Atlantic heat transport, we have a reduction of September CS concentration in both the Pacific side and also the Atlantic side. Now the mechanism is because the enhanced Atlantic heat transport induces the enhanced basal melting and the reduction of Arctic CS mass at all different seasons. And this can, uh, collision map shows that um, this anti-collision is strongest in the Atlantic side and decay to the Pacific side. And this change of uh, CS mass um, sickness in all seasons contribute to the change in September Arctic CS extent. Now, um, this Atlantic heat transport variability is indeed caused by the overturning circulation variability. Showing in the lower panel shows that the overturning circulation um, actually lead the change in the heat transport by about one year. And this change in the heat transport also caused a coherent change downstream uh, of the ski transport uh, through Barency opening and the East Front Street. As showed um, in the upper panel, there's a coherent change with the heat transport across Arctic Circle lead the downstream change by several years. And yesterday there's a nice uh, poster showing this uh, direction process uh, from the MPI group. Um, the um, heat transport uh, across the Barnes Sea opening is strongly anti-correlated with the winter sea ice extent um, over in the Barnes Sea. And so because the Atlantic heat transport uh, can cause uh, change in both winter uh, Barnes Sea sea ice extent, also summer Arctic sea ice extent, so these two um, times are also significantly correlated. And the lowest panel shows the uh, observed uh, record of the winter Barnes Sea sea ice extent and observed September Arctic sea ice anomaly. They both show very similar uh, normalized decline trend and has also uh, highly correlated with each other. And this just shows the observed um, winter Barnes Sea sea ice extent in the 1979, most of the region in the Barnes Sea is covered by CS in winter. Well, by 2006, we see a substantial retreat of winter CS in Barnes Sea. And there's an uh, observational based study showing that the, by uh, Alcan, which also in the audience, this next paper shows the observed uh, increase in the uh, heat transport across Barnes Sea opening is a prime driver for the observed CS decline in the Barnes Sea. And what is the role of the atmosphere heat transport? It turned out that uh, with the stronger overturning circulation that's induced uh, enhanced North Atlantic heat transport uh, into the Arctic, then there's an uh, enhanced upward surface heat flux released into the Arctic region. And this uh, enhanced heat flux is carried by the atmosphere here uh, transferred back into the lower latitude from the Arctic region. So the northward at atmosphere heat transport actually reduced. And this compensation between atmosphere heat transport and ocean heat transport, the so-called Biryakni's compensation, uh, has been found at decadal time scale in previous studies. Here with a much longer control simulation uh, at a multi-decadal and centennial time scale, the anti-correlation is much stronger than that at decadal time scale. And so the um, northward atmosphere heat transport actually provide a negative feedback to the uh, September Arctic CS variations. Um, for summer Arctic CS variability, the Atlantic heat transport is not the only key player. The Pacific heat transport through the Burning Street also contribute to the change in summer Arctic CS. With enhanced Pacific heat transport, um, we see a reduction of the uh, September Arctic CS, especially over the Pacific side. And this Pacific heat transport is also highly correlated with PDO in the, mod in the model. And another predictor is uh, the special atmosphere pattern, the so-called Arctic dipole, defined as the spring season sea level pre uh, second EOF in the uh, sea level pressure. And this positive Arctic dipole induces uh, enhanced transpolar ice drift enhanced uh, uh, CS export through the front street. So that's lead to a reduction of the um, CS um, at the Pacific side and slightly increase of CS at Atlantic side. 
And because of this uh, cancellation, so the net effect of the Arctic dipole uh, is not very efficient compared to the other two predictor. So um, there's the three key players uh, for the summer Arctic CS decline. Um, the enhanced Atlantic heat transport and the enhanced Pacific heat transport and positive Arctic dipole. So we can uh, reconstruct September Arctic CS using a multiple regression model with all the three key players. And um, also it's estimated based on the observed trend, um, these uh, internal variability can contribute substantially to the observed Arctic CS decline in summer. In particular, the uh, positive Arctic dipole and the enhanced Atlantic heat transport contribute about half of the observed decline. And, um, and, and the Atlantic heat transport is uh, a major player here. So in summary, um, the AMOC variability and the associated Atlantic heat transport into the Arctic uh, has played a significant role in the low frequency variability of summer Arctic CS extent. In both models and the observation, summer Arctic CS extent variation are significantly correlated with winter Barnes CS extent variations indicate an important role of the Atlantic heat transport into the Arctic. The AMOC fingerprint indicated um, a strengthening of the overturning circulation since mid 70s consistent with the observed decline in Arctic CS. And at low frequency, the uh, atmosphere heat transport into the Arctic are forced by an anti-correlated change in the Atlantic heat transport into the Arctic, so provide a negative feedback to the September Arctic CS extent. Enhanced Pacific heat transport um, into the Arctic and positive Arctic dipole also contribute to the summer Arctic CS decline. And very recent study identified a seven year pause from 2007 to 2013 in September Arctic CS decline. And this updated time series shows we now have a nine year pause from 2007 to 2015. And there's uh, no decline trend over this period. And uh, it's quite likely that the recent decline in the overturning circulation uh, contribute to this nine year pause. And if the overturning circulation continue to weaken in the near future, there might be a longer hiatus in the September Arctic CS decline. Okay, I'll stop here. Thank you.